What's going on? I'm FPL Inzaghi and welcome back to another video. Now today it's my team selection ahead of double game week 20 and am I going to be playing the triple captain chip? A lot of talk about whether this is the best week to play your triple captain. So I'm going to talk about whether I'm going to play the triple captain and what transfers I'm thinking about making. I've got a big question on my hands. Salah or KDB? I'm one of those managers that has Salah in my team and I'm faced with that question whether to transfer him out for KDB and I've also got Cancelo as well. What do we do with Cancelo? I'm going to talk about all of that and more in this video. So make sure that you drop a like, hit that like button now, hit subscribe as well and let's take a look at my team selection ahead of Game Week 20. Having a quick look back at game week 19, it's not finished yet at the time of recording. I've still got that Fulham and Chelsea game to come. Unfortunately, Mitrovic picked up that yellow card, which means that he's not playing in that game. I've just got Andreas and Kepa. Really frustrating to see Andreas go off before the 60th minute. Mitrovic, he was on for nine points, double that 18 with a game to come, looking very good. But then he got that yellow card, dropped out of the bonus points, and only finished on five points, which is quite frustrating. But I was absolutely saved with Haaland blanking and KDB blanking as well. Those two were kind of the major dangers for my team. Harry Kane, I think he got 16 points, so he was someone that punished my rank as well. Luke Shaw, 15, he came into the team, very pleased with that. Blanks for Nunes, Saka with the clean sheet point. Rashford continues his fine form, so I'm on 53 points. It's a small-ish red arrow of about 10k down to 96k, but I'm still in the top 100k, which I'm pleased with. I've got two more players to come. If we can keep Mason Mount quiet, maybe a clean sheet, a nil or draw between Chelsea and Fulham will suit me down to the ground. But let's see what happens in that game. And let's take a look at my team ahead of game week 20. Taking a look at the team ahead of game week 20, Kepa is in goals, playing at home against Crystal Palace, a relatively nice fixture for Chelsea. They are struggling at the moment. Some questions being asked of Graham Potter. Can he answer those questions? That's gonna be the interesting thing to see. Do you think that top four is gone for Chelsea? It seems that way at the moment. Other teams like Arsenal, City, Newcastle United, and even Manchester United look to be in good form. Chelsea is slipping down that table. But as long as Kepa still keeps getting the save points and the occasional clean sheet, I'll be very happy. Trippier, of course, in defense, a mainstay of the team. Got him in at 5 million. Playing at home against Fulham, Mitrovic is going to be available for that game. He's probably the main threat to the Newcastle clean sheet, but as we've seen so many times this season, Newcastle are so strong defensively, and I still think it's a good strategy to try and double up with a Trippier and a Botman, or a Trippier or even like a Dan Byrne, if you wanted to go something with a little bit left field. But happy I've got Trippier there for now. Now, Cancelo, I wanted to record this video after the Carabao Cup match. I wanted to see what Pep was going to be doing with Cancelo in that game. And I really have to say that I wasn't too impressed with Cancelo in that match. I don't think any Manchester City player covered themselves in glory. And if you take that game alone in the last couple of weeks, it looks like Cancelo won't start in game week 20. I don't think he'll start that Manchester United or even that Tottenham game. That was kind of my first impression. But then we heard about this injury or potential injury to John Stones. And I started thinking about the implications of that injury to the City backline. Ruben Diaz is out injured. We know that Pep likes to play a right-footed defender in that right-sided centre-back position. So Ruben Diaz is out. Laporte is, of course, left-footed, and he's still coming back for fitness. He's got a Kanji there. So he looks probably nailed on to start. Certainly that first game of the double, a Kanji at right-sided centre-back. And then you've got the left-sided centre-back. Laporte, as I've mentioned, is not up to fitness yet. And that's where Ake probably comes into the team. Ake has been playing at left back, taking Cancelo's position. But now, if Ake is forced to come back into left-sided centre-back, then that should mean that the left-back position is now vacant. Yes, there's Sergi Gomez, I believe his name is, there for competition. But Rico Lewis has been playing at right-back for City, not at left-back. So that left-back position looks to be fairly vacant. And perhaps the John Stones injury might be a blessing in disguise for Cancelo owners like me. Now, I'm not getting carried away with anything. I still think that if you've got no other issues in your team, Cancelo is a definite sell. And he is someone that I'm looking to sell, but he's got a double game week. And even though he's not nailed on, I'm finding it really difficult to sell a double game week player. 
For in weeks to come, I could sell Cancelo for Trent Alexander-Arnold or Robertson. If Liverpool have a double game week, I've got no problems there. But this week, City do have a double, and there aren't too many defenders that I would want to sell him for. I was looking at John Stones at 5.4, but it looks like, as I've mentioned, that he is injured now. So I've got this Cancelo problem on my hands. And right now, to be honest, I think I'm just going to hold on to Cancelo. I got him at the beginning of the season for $7 million, so I can keep taking these price drops. It's not too much of an issue at all. I think I'm just going to hold on to Cancelo, cross my fingers, and hope that he gets at least one start in the double, if not two. And that might be due to John Stones' injury. If we do hear, though, that John Stones is fit, that I might make that Cancelo to Stones transfer. It gives me a little bit of cash and it gives me a player for the double game week. And I really do think that John Stones has some goal threat. I think he looks quite dangerous when he gets up into the box for set pieces. So if we hear that John Stones is fit, I think I will sell Cancelo. But if we don't hear anything about John Stones, I think I'm just gonna hold on to Cancelo and cross my fingers. Luke Shaw came into the team last game week with 15 points, a great way to make his debut for the squad. He's got a pretty tough double. It's a fairly mixed double against Manchester City at home and then Crystal Palace away. Crystal Palace away is not going to be an easy fixture. And it's very likely that Manchester United won't keep a clean sheet in any of those two fixtures for the double. But of course, Luke Shaw, he offers a lot going forward in an attacking sense. He got his first goal in a very long time last game week, but he does offer an assist threat. 5.1, he's probably a defender that I'm looking to hold long term. I'm happy he's got a double. He's not going anywhere in my team. Moving into midfield, and Saka is playing away against Tottenham in the North London derby. There's some temptation to move on for the likes of Mares or even Phil Foden, but I want Saka long term. I've got money invested in him. I don't want to be losing Saka. Arsenal do have some double game weeks to come as well. It's a tough fixture away against Spurs, but in a derby, absolutely anything can happen. And I've got memories of him performing quite well against Spurs last season. He's a local lad for Arsenal. He's an Arsenal junior. These games mean a lot to these players. So I am backing Saka to do well, despite a relatively tough fixture in game week 20. Salah, he's one player that I am considering selling for Kevin De Bruyne. Salah has been great for me this season. Yes, he's underperformed on his expected data and he hasn't really been the Salah that we've seen in previous years. I think that's partly because Haaland has been so good, but I also think that Salah has been okay. I don't think he's been as bad as what people have been saying. And with the additions to the team like Darwin Nunes and Gakpo, I think that only increases Salah's chances at goals and assists. Now, the reason why I am contemplating selling Salah for De Bruyne is just a fixtures game. De Bruyne has a double this week. There's a chance, around a 60 to 70% chance, that Liverpool double next game week, but then City have another confirmed double in game week 23. So just taking that at face value, Kevin De Bruyne has one more fixture than Mo Salah across the next five or six game weeks. But kind of digging deeper into what my transfer plans potentially could be, and there's a chance that I go Salah to De Bruyne this game week, have De Bruyne for the double game week 20, and then if Liverpool get that double in 21, I could just go straight back. Now, a lot of people don't like that hokey cokey, but the rest of the team is not looking too bad. And so if I don't get any other fires crop up between now and the deadline, that is a very likely scenario for me that I go Salah to De Bruyne, get that double game week in, and then I just go back from De Bruyne to Salah next game week and just make sure that I've got that 0 0.3 or 0 0.4 in the bank to make that transfer if needed. Because I do want Salah for game week 21 if they double. If they don't, I'd happily hold on to De Bruyne all the way through until the end of double game week 23 for Man City. What might change that plan, though, is if we hear that Liverpool have a confirmed double in 21. If we hear that Liverpool have a confirmed double in 21, right now, at the time of recording, it's just a 60 to 70% chance. But if we hear confirmation, then I might just hold on to Salah and think about using those transfers elsewhere. But at this stage, I'm very likely to go Salah to De Bruyne just because of those extra fixtures. Rashford's been sensational since he's come into the team. It should say that his fixtures are Manchester City at home and Crystal Palace away. A lot of people are actually talking about captaining Rashford or even triple captaining Rashford. I wouldn't go so far as to triple captain him, but if you don't want to play your triple captain this week, then putting the captain's armband on Rashford isn't the worst shout. 
Anthony Martial, his fitness concerns are there. They are legitimate. He doesn't really play 90 minutes ever. And when he comes off or when he doesn't play, it's often Rashford playing through the middle. And he's historically done quite well against Manchester City and Liverpool. He's got the pace to get in behind these teams, hit them on the counter-attack, where they're vulnerable. And I think that he could do well playing at home against Manchester City. And then he's got a great fixture against Palace, who defensively have struggled recently. So if you don't have Rashford in your team, he's a definite buy. And he's even a captain option this week if you wanted to back against Haaland. Martinelli comes back into the team after I benched him last week. Thankfully, I got away with that. Playing away against Tottenham, of course, that North London derby. There could be goals in that game. Tottenham haven't been too defensively sound recently. They normally give up a couple of goals and then come back late in the second half. I'm not really sure that Antonio Conte has addressed that issue just yet. So there could be some joy for Martinelli and Saka in this match. Mitrovic came into the side last week for the double. Of course, he got the yellow card. And looking back now, I kind of do regret making that transfer. There's probably a little bit of outcome bias there, but one of the transfers that I'm looking at making this week is Mitrovic back to Martial, and that's the player I had before I sold Martial for Mitrovic. So a little bit of frustration there. I think that if he played that second fixture against Chelsea, got a return in that, and let's say that he finished on double digits, captain into the 20s, then I'd look back and I'd happily make that extra transfer. But it just feels like if I'm going to go Mitrovic back to Martial, it feels like going back a step, even though Martial has that extra fixture. So it's something I'm thinking about, but suffice to say, I'm not that pleased with Mitrovic in the team. I think this is a tough fixture away against Newcastle in double game week 20. And the managers who already have Martial in place, I think you're much better suited. I just don't have the funds to be able to go from Mitrovic to Kane. If I was able to do that, I would probably do so, but it would force me to downgrade Salah to someone like a Foden or a Mares to upgrade Mitrovic to Kane. I just don't want to be making that transfer. So looks like I'm stuck with Mitrovic for now. Haaland, and he has the triple captain active right now. Let me tell you why I'm very likely to play my triple captain this week. Yes, the fixtures are tough. Manchester United away and Tottenham at home. You can see that on the screen. But when it comes to playing your triple captain, the three things that I look for is a double game week, which he has, a great asset, which he is, and certainty of minutes, which we do have for Haaland. Yes, there might be a point later in the season when he has better fixtures, but I do not think that we will have greater certainty around his minutes then than we do now. So for instance, the other double game weeks that Ben Crowland is talking about for Manchester City, he's suggesting that game week 23, which we already know is confirmed, He's suggesting that that double game week is going to be affected by FA Cup. Arsenal are playing Manchester City in the FA Cup. There's chances there that if they draw, that there might be a replay, which will again kind of add to that congestion of the fixture schedule. But with the fixtures in double game week 23 that Manchester City has, I believe it's a Sunday to Wednesday turnaround, which is much less than the Saturday to Thursday turnaround that we're looking at at the moment. So the rest in double game week 23 is less. And we don't know that Haaland's going to be fit then. It's a couple of weeks away. It's about a month away, in fact. And we don't know that KDB is going to be fit. We don't know what is going to be happening with City's team at that time. And we don't know how it's going to be impacted by the short turnaround and the FA Cup. So let's look forward to double game week 34 and double game week 37. Try and stay with me here. These are the other two double game weeks that Ben Crowland has spoken about as being big double game weeks. And it looks like City could get some favorable fixtures in double game week 34 and 37. But the problem with 34 is that is probably the week that I want to play my bench boost. At the moment, that is the week I'm looking to play my bench boost. And I can't play my triple captain the same time that I'm playing my bench boost. So that's kind of ruled out. How about 37? Well, double game week 37, it's only one game week before the end of the season. The league might be wrapped up. I don't know which team's going to win it at this stage, but it might be wrapped up by then, and City might be resting players. They might be in the semi-final or the final of the Champions League, and therefore be resting players in the league for the Champions League. We don't know what's going to be happen happening with the fixtures and the injury status of players in 34 and 37, despite the fixtures arguably being better. So for me, it comes back to the three foundational principles of playing a triple captainship. A double game week or a triple game week, tick. A great asset, tick. 
certainty of minutes tick. And so for all of those reasons, I'm 80% likely to play my triple captainship this week for Erling Haaland. Let me know in the comments below, are you playing your triple captainship as well? Or are you going to be waiting for a different game week? If so, I'd really be interested to know why. And finally, Darwin Nunes up front. A few managers are selling Darwin for Harry Kane, but I'm just not really able to afford that unless I make significant downgrades. The managers who have the funds to do that have an Almiron over a Saka, and I'm happy to have Saka. Yes, it might mean a little bit of pain this week, but in weeks to come when Arsenal have a double game week, I'm happy that I've got Saka in the team. So I've got Darwin Nunes there and Saka over the likes of Almiron and Kane. That's the bet I've made. I'm just going to have to lie on it. I, I still back Darwin Nunes to start converting some of the expected data that he's generating as well. So I'm still team Darwin Nunes and I'm fully expecting him to start banging in the goals anytime soon. And that means on the bench, we've got Ward, White, Andreas, and Patterson is, of course, injured. That's probably an issue I've got to deal with at some point, but it's not pressing right now. I really dislike having White in the team. He's someone that I would love to get rid of, and then I would free up that third Arsenal spot for an Odegaard or an Enketia. And there is some temptation to get rid of White if... Salah and Liverpool, for example, have a confirmed double game week in 21, then I might just leave Salah, disregard KDB, and address the white issue, maybe get a third Man City defender or a third Man City player, the second defender in the team, go for someone like an Akanji or an Ake, a Stones if he's fit, for Ben White, and then that frees up that third Arsenal spot. But I've got Ben White in there for now, and I think my bench will probably be just as it is here for double game week 20. Having a look at the transfer status, I've got one free transfer. I really envy the managers who have two. You're in a great position this week. You could make three for a minus four. Squad value is not too bad. And the chip that I've got in play at the moment is the triple captain. Let's talk about my transfers for double game week 20. So at this stage, the one free transfer that I'm looking to make is Salah to Kevin De Bruyne. And it's for that double game week. I don't even mind having to go back to Salah next game week if Liverpool have a confirmed double. As I already said in the video, if Liverpool do get a confirmed double in 21 before the 20 deadline, then I might backflip on this move and keep Salah in the team and make a defensive transfer to get a third City asset. But if we don't hear anything about the Liverpool double game week in 21, then this is the likely move that I will make. Salah out for De Bruyne. I think they're quite close in terms of expected points, but when you throw in an extra fixture for De Bruyne, then frankly, I'm happy to buy a ticket to that lottery. And when you look back at the points that these two have scored since the unlimited transfers, I started with Salah. And at the moment, I think Salah is around 10 or 11 points better off than De Bruyne since game week 17. So the managers who started with De Bruyne already have him in place for this week. I'm around 10 points better off than they are. And if I was to sell Salah for De Bruyne, I have a very similar team to them. I've got De Bruyne, they have De Bruyne, but the difference is, is that I've got around 10 extra points. Even if you factor in, let's say a minus four for a transfer, that they're one transfer ahead, then it ends up being around a net gain of six points. So taking a hit for Salah to De Bruyne still leaves me with a net overall gain, which I'm really happy with. So that's my likely transfer to go Salah to De Bruyne. There is one more transfer that I am contemplating, and it's Mitrovic out for Martial. Now, as I've already mentioned, I do have some slight concerns here. The algorithm really loves this transfer, Mitrovic to Martial. But my main concerns is just Martial's fitness. Wout Weghorst has been confirmed now as signing for Manchester United. And by all reports, he's keen to hit the ground running. He's made himself available for the Manchester derby as well. So there's some you know, doubt there for Martial's expected minutes. So this is a transfer that I'm actually leaning towards not making, but I did originally plan as part of a minus four. Mitrovic out, Martial in, it gives me an extra fixture, and I'm not expecting much from Mitrovic away to Newcastle. So it kind of feels like that minus four will be earned back straight away. And then Manchester United are very likely to have a double game week in game week 22. So I'm kind of getting, you know, three extra fixtures there, or two extra fixtures at least I should say, over Mitrovic for Martial. But when the expected minutes aren't quite there, it is a bit of a risky transfer. So at this stage, I'm very likely to do Salah to De Bruyne if we don't hear anything about Liverpool's double game week. 
If we do, I might make a transfer in defense, but De Bruyne likely to come in, and then I'm gonna contemplate whether it's worth making a minus four. Cancelo to Stones, perhaps, or Mitrovic to Martial. Lots of transfer plans going on. Let me know what your transfer plans are ahead of Double Game Week 20, and are you going to be playing that triple captain chip? Let me know. Make sure you hit subscribe and hit like as well. It really helps other people on YouTube see the video. So please hit that like button. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.